and welcome to another session today in English language. And our focus today is first on phrasal verbs and then on writing formal letters. But before that, let us review previous lesson. Welcome back. Like I said, today the first aspect we're focusing on is the phrasal verbs. What are phrasal verbs? Now, phrasal verbs are formed of combinations of a verb and a word element. Okay? It could be a verb and a preposition, it could be a verb and what another. At the but most times it's a verb and a word preposition. Okay, and when a verb and a preposition combines together, it gives a different meaning entirely. It does not have the same meaning as the verb that gave birth to it. For instance, you know when you say turn, turn means to move. So if I say turn out. Turn out means results. Okay, so it's different from what gave to it. So this is a combination of the verb plus a preposition. The verb plus a preposition. So in the same way, so that's what I'm saying that it changes the original meaning of the word of the verb. Okay. Now let's um, go into details on that. Now. We have turn down, and when you see it, like, turn down, it means you refuse something or you what rejected. I'll give an example: I turned down the offer. So I can use this one to replace. I can say I rejected the offer. Or I can say I was refused the what offer. So another way I could not see it is what I turned down the offer. Then we have what give. In giving means to what surrender, so we can say our team refused to what giving to their opponents, or we can say our team refused to what surrender. So every of the words in brackets can be used to what replace the principal verbs. We have run across. To run across someone means to what to meet them by chance. It means Come across somebody by chance. We ran across an old friend yesterday at Banjo. So I can say we met by chance. We met by chance an old friend. So instead of bugging myself with this old expression, I can just replace it with what phrase of them run across. To fall on means to what attack. So I would say the robbers fell on two. Travelers on the lonely road. So you say the robbers attacked two travelers on the lonely road. You know, and we have give up. The give up means to what? To stop. My brother has given up smoking. So my brother has stopped smoking. Okay. So, um. We have numerous um, examples of phrasal verbs. Like I told you, most of the times it's a verb plus a word element. Most times it's a preposition that gives rise right to what? The phrasal verb. Now, sometimes we could have what you call double particles. That is, we have more than one element or more than, you know, one, you know, particle. Giving rise to a phrasal verb. For instance, done away with. We didn't say done away. Done away with. Away is an element or a particle. This is another particle. But the verb there is what? Done. So done away with means to what? Abolish. So my town has done away with obsolete customs. So you can say my town has abolished obsolete customs. I cannot put up with this insulting. If your up here is what and that a particle with is another particle, but put is the word verb. 
so it means to what tolerate so you can say i cannot tolerate this insulting behavior so the examples are numerous okay so let's move on to what we call informal letter now what's an informal letter an informal letter is a type of letter otherwise called a personal letter or what you call a private letter so you can say in informal letters are personal or private or letters that's number one it's a letter you write to your friend your brother your sister your parents your uncle your close acquaintance somebody who you share some relationship with okay and the purpose of your writing is to discuss a personal private or intimate I think that's why you call it a personal private letter now in your exams you'll be tested on this okay so you have to learn as well as also master this type of letter writing so let's move on to the features of a an informal letter let's move on to the features of an informal letter okay now number one is that what you must you agree with me that the informal letter uses an informal language okay so the language is what informal you don't have to be too respectful okay you just have to be chatty okay and uh, it's just like you're talking to your friend you're talking to your mom dad so you have to be open minded okay and discuss what freely because you know that you and the person that you are chatting with have a familiar relationship and two he said the language must not be very formal okay it's not be very formal but you be very you know ambiguous it's not don't sound too respectful Okay, so uh, please also be careful that you don't also uh, use <laughs> uh, slides. How uh, life? Hope no skin pain. Wonder who could not help for me. I for me. Yes. Don't overdo it. Okay, yes, it must be informal. It must be chatty. Please don't use slides please do not use slides in informal letters then also use short forms and use abbreviations it's permitted in the informal letter it's not writing i am use i am it's not writing i am okay you have okay can't but in the case of a formal letter or a informal letter please subscribe and write the full expression Okay, and also the first paragraph always contains the you making an inquiry about the welfare of the recipient of the letter, and telling him about your own welfare. So that's how you write a, an informal letter. You tell the person, How are you doing? How is your trying to inquire? Then also you say, Well, over here, I'm doing very good. My parents are awesome being verified okay, or it's been talk with us here in Gambia okay so just make sure that you it's continuing the first time then also you can bring in other topics of interest okay I'm bringing other topics of interest but please you have to keep in mind that the person um, is also familiar with that um, topic of interest talk about uh, insurgency in your country about religious crisis in the country, about the politics, you know, that is happening in the world. Okay? But please don't bring in an abstract you know, topic of interest. Bring in something that interests you. Lastly, you can send it to the whole topic of interest. Okay? So So this is an example of um, 
an informal letter. We have CHS Romy, PO Box 1008, Romy 10 1071. My dear, okay, that's it. So I'm going to back to dear pal. You go to the dear pal, dear 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 sister, dear brother, dear sister. So please. Don't put the effort. Okay, the first dear Joseph, dear Jack, dear Jay. We have how I remember the situation requiring a bad person's welfare. Then also tell the person about the letter. Fine. I learned that as they she left really with the word conclude remember the conclusion is the same way that's completed to put that moment to close. That closing in the subsequent you know, the complimentary news is always a good news since then. Don't use your school for me. Use that only in formal letters. And remember the first letter of the closing subsequent letter. It's just first name. Don't need the signature who you face to. Remember the person who shares the school of work. You. So let's look at the format of an informal letter. It's one of the easiest uh, letters to write. It doesn't require you writing topics using official language. You just make sure your grammar is correct and the locations are also correct. So with this, we have come to the end of today's lesson. Thank you very much for joining. And to refresh your memory and recall everything that has been taught in today's lesson, I would encourage and love that you take the lesson, the test that appears on your screen.